welcome back. So now, last time we talked about、um, that we when we did the tool clip in previous video, we put input layer and clip feature layer in clip tool, and we save the output in a specific location. So the same here, we can clip here. And for output feature class, we can change it navigate to save in my forest,、uh, my Oregon forest geo database. So here we go into save it as Portland.、Um, Poppy. So we go into change the name from.、Um, we're going to change the direction where it's saved. So earlier I mentioned that each map document has a default geo database, which is the home location of the spatial content of your map. So now this location is used、um, for adding data sets and for saving resultant、uh, resultant data sets created by various editing and geo processing operations. But here we're going to double click the.、Um, We did was double click the clip tool, and it opens up the table and the output feature class. So the feature class to be created, we're going to save to we browse and we click browse browse button, and we clip navig we we navigate it to the contents of my Oregon Forest Geo database in my folder. For Chapter 18, so in the name we're going to type a Portland. Portland um population. Por por population justification. So now we're going to hit save, and now you can see the output feature class change into my jump drive E drive. Uh, getting to know ArcGIS Chapter 18, my data and my Oregon Forest Geo database in Portland. Once we change it here, and here it changes to, and we can see the name it changes to. When we hover over on top of the name of、um, this output layer, and we can see the path name where we saved it. Now, so the output feature class information is updated on the output feature class dialog box. So. Also, we can just change it from here for the output. So there are two ways you can just change it in tools, output feature class, change the path name and where you save it, or you can just click here and sit and change it. That you can just double click the output element in the model currently labeled as populated jurisdictions clip that was earlier the name. So now we're going to click OK to close. The previous dialog box. So now all the elements are colored in, which means the process is ready to run. When you run the process, a new feature class will be created and saved on disks. And remember where we're going to save it? It will be in our geo database. So now, however, the output data is not automatically added. As a layer to ArcMap, if you want the data added to your map, you will have to set a properly on the output data element. So, in the model, we can right-click on the Portland、um, jurisdiction、uh, population jurisdiction output oval, the green one, and click Add to Display. Right-click on it and Add to Display. And you can see there was a track mark means once we run the model and it will add to display for us. So then it will display the results、um, in our table of contents. So on the model、uh, builder toolbar, we're going to click run tool. So this is just like play, and here it means run, and it's going to run the model. As the model runs, you can see、um, here it will be.、Uh, Oh, I forgot to move this. So it will, you will see a status for the model to run, and now it's being、uh, completed. So I'm going to explain a little bit here. So as this model runs, each of these tools runs red、um, very briefly. Your model has only one tool. So if you weren't watching closely, or if the process report covered the model, you might not have seen it. 
When the tool is finished running, it turns yellow again. Drop, um, you will see drop shadow right here. Drop shadows behind the tool, and the output data elements indicate that the process has been run. Once a process has been run, you cannot run it again until you either change a parameter or choose run entire model or validate entire model from the model menu. So if we click close and run it again, it won't run. So it will tell you all process has already been run that you cannot rerun it. And close the process report and notice that after the uh, process runs, the job shadow appears behind the model elements. And you can see here, since we add to display and our new Portland PJ uh, is added to our map. So the Portland PJ layer is added to ArcMap. You may need to move the model window out of the way. Um, so it's symbolized in a random color. So if necessary, we're going to turn off the populated justification layer. And then we open the Portland justification layer property and change the symbology, symbology to match the orange color of the go to symbology. We're going to match the orange color of the populated justification layer. So on the model builder toolbar, we're going to save. Um, now let's just match first. Orange layer population. It will be in my data. Not one file. Match population justification. It apply. Hit OK. And now we cut this. And originally we have everything in here. And if we turn on and off. And we see that we already cut this. And now we're going to save our model. So close the model in our two box window. So the model and its all settings are stored in the first uh, Oregon Forest Analysis two box file you created at the beginning of this video. So if you follow that, everything is set. And we're going to click uh, close everything and save everything. And now we're going to move to 19, uh, chapter 19, drill processing vector data. So the same way we're going to go to our folder, chapter 19, and open it up, exercise 19. So for the first exercises, uh, the first, the map you're going to see will shows out the lookout uh, lookout towers, populated jurisdictions, and forest land, and PQR, CWA. Uh, county warning area selection, you will begin by buffering the populated jurisdictions using the buffer drill processing tool. As I mentioned, there are so many, uh, there are some common, and we, are, we used dissolve, we used clip, and now we are going to learn buffer. And we're going to zoom to layer so we can see, um, no, not this one. Zoom to layer so we can see a better view or you can just use uh, extent. Okay. On the menu toolbar, we're going to click the geo processing to buffer. This menu provides access to commonly used geo processing tools. You can also access the tools through Arc2Box, uh, perform a search to locate them quickly. So we can just do it real quick. And the search window is, this is Python, this is search, and you can just click buffer. And we're going to be familiar with, it will be an analysis tool. Um, Analysis tool that it will open it up for you. Analysis tool uh, in proximity buffer. So if you click the first link uh, in search, then it will show you. Go back to search again. Oh, it won't show. Uh, it will show you 
the first link will show when you click, it will bring you up the tool, and the second link it will take you to where the tool located in the Arc2 box. So now, right now, I have my Arc2 box in my Arc catalog below here. So the buffer to dialog box appears. Next, we're going to select the layer with the with the input features to be buffered. Designate an output feature class. Enter a buffer distance and select a dissolve option. So now on the buffer tool dialog box, we're going to click the input feature arrow and arrow and click Portland population jurors. Alternatively, drag the popul um, Portland population jurors layer from the ArcMap table of contents to this location. So for into we can just drag it here. And now automatically automatically like previously um so you can see output feature class will give you a location always be in this default uh, geo database to save the buffer. Uh, so only layers from an active data frame can be dragged to an arc to box tool. If you drag a layer from an inactive data frame to a geo processing tool, warnings will uh, or errors are produced inside the tool. So you will not be able to proceed. So the same way we're going to click the browse. Uh, we're going to click the browse um, button right here. And next to the output feature class box. On the output feature class dialog window, we're going to uh, navigate to chapter 19, my data, and my Oregon Forest Geo database. And in the name box, we're going to type P O P J U R S buffer, and we're going to click save. And now the output feature class information is updated uh, with the new location and name. So for the buffer distance, make sure the linear unit option is selected. So it right now it is selected and we can um, look at distance value or field. It will explain it here uh, on the right hand side for you. So now we're going to type 1000 here, 1000. Mountain feet as the measurement unit. So scroll down if necessary. Make sure to solve type is set to one. It's right here. And now it's none, and we're going to set it to. Oh, it's none. So make sure the dissolve type is set to none. We're going to click OK, and then this process will make a few minutes because the large number of communities. So now everything looks good, and we uh, we have input feature and output feature class. We put uh, in in the correct pathway and the destination to save our output, and we put one thousand for uh, the distance for a linear unit, and we made sure that dissolve type is not and click OK, and the new Population jurisdic uh, jurisdiction buffer layer is will be added to the map once it's done. It looks similar. It will look similar to the original populated jurisdictions layer, except that it has a one thousand food buffer surrounding the features. If you want, we can zoom in to view the buffer. Just make sure to return to your previous extent to continue uh, this exercise. Now it is still running. Okay, let's can just wait for a little bit. And then once the buffer, oh, it, it's coming out right here, it's buffer. And once it comes, once it comes, we're going to change it. Um, we we're going to change the color of the buffer.